Why are you an expat and I'm a criminal? When these words were spoken to me, an expat, by a refugee in my research group, I didn't know how to answer. He came to the Netherlands and received the label of refugee, a label which would change the rest of his life. He found himself in the Dutch integration program, a program lasting three years, which requires him to attend privatized Dutch language and cultural classes and to complete six Dutch language and cultural exams. And if he doesn't complete this within three years, then he faces a fine, a fine of 10,000 euros plus interest. A recent report from the Dutch government shows us that he, along with over 50% of refugees in the Netherlands, are facing this fine today. So if you hear this, you might think, well, this system needs to change. And that's exactly what my research is trying to find out. But I'm not researching the effects of higher fines. I'm not researching the effects of more tests. What I want to know is if the starting point for change can be in the words or the discourse that we use when we're developing integration programs in the Netherlands. Now, let me take you on a journey of the discourse that you encounter as a refugee when you are integrating in the Netherlands. So you are a refugee, and you have to buy a book. And in this book are sentences that you have to practice saying out loud in order to learn Dutch. So you have a woman with a drill and the text, I don't have a boyfriend. You have a man on a camel with the text, I don't live in the Netherlands or a man in the kitchen with the text, I am not married. Or you have a black child with the text, I was born in Africa. What messages are you receiving as a refugee when you are learning Dutch from this book about what is encouraged, what is discouraged, and what is, or better yet, what is not Dutch? You are the one who has to learn. You are the one who has to ask for help. You have to sort out your integration exam yourself. These words are found in the Dutch government brochure, Integration for Asylum Seekers. And I studied this document because I wanted to know, what do you read the most as a refugee who has handed this document? And what do you think it is? The thing that you read the most as a refugee when you begin your integration program is the word pay. You read pay a fine, to be more specific, 15 times in that document. The second thing that you read is you must complete. You read that 14 times. And the final thing that you read the most as a refugee starting your integration in the Netherlands is take a test, 13 times. This is the world that we offer to refugees when they start their integration in the Netherlands. But how is it in other places? Canada is known as the gold standard for integration with their private sponsorship program. And this is a program that's so different from how we do integration in the Netherlands, you can almost not compare the two. But let's zoom in on one small aspect. Let's zoom in on the discourse that you see in the programs in Canada. So if you are a refugee in Canada, then I hand you the document, Welcome to Canada. And I studied this document as well, and I went looking. I went looking for that one word that was so important in our Dutch documents, the word pay. And I could barely find it. And when I did, it wasn't about paying a fine. It was about pay your tuition fees if you decide to study, or pay for your children's sports teams, or in sentences like this very Canadian sentence, Canadians are very generous people. Their taxes pay for you to have language classes. <laughs> but you also saw sentences like this. Connecting to others is important. 
Making new friends will help you feel at home in Canada. Now, I am an occupational therapist, a profession focused on participation and meaningful daily activities. And I can't help but wonder how your daily activities, the activities which make your identity, would change if you are a refugee trying to make new friends, or if you are a refugee trying to prove that you can do it all on your own. And now I would like to show you a slide that compares how many refugees in the Netherlands have to pay a fine for failing their integration exam, compared to how many refugees in Canada have to pay a fine for failing their integration exam. But I can't, because in Canada there are no integration exams, there are no fines, and there are no mandatory courses. In Canada, they measure integration in different ways, such as this. How much do refugees themselves feel that they belong in Canada. What this shows us is that a discourse based on connecting to others and making friends actually results in us measuring successful integration in a different way. But do we see examples of this closer to home? Citizens in the Netherlands have responded in an incredible way to refugees arriving in the Netherlands. Since 2015, we've seen a huge increase in citizen initiatives aimed at helping refugees integrate. And when you look at the discourse of these programs, you see it's often quite similar to what we saw in Canada. They don't believe integration starts with a test or a course. They say things like this. Integration begins in the community. Now, we don't know for sure yet that this kind of discourse equals better integration. That's exactly what my research is trying to find out. But I believe we need to be critical about all discourse. We need to be critical about what ideas and ways of thinking are behind the words that we use. We need to be critical about what we are asking refugees to do and who we are asking refugees to be. Researching discourse makes these invisible expectations visible. Now let me ask you, now that I've made this visible to you, is this you? Is this us? Is this what we really want refugees to strive to become in the Netherlands? We must continue to research this discourse and make it visible, because only when things are visible can they be challenged? And through challenging, can begin to be changed. Thank you. <laughs>